Alright guys, so at this point in the course we've built a lot of different types of neural networks and machine learning algorithms, but now we are going to build a recurrent neural network, and this recurrent neural network is going to take in text from an author, a very large text file, and then generate its own original text in the style of that author. And the reason why we're using a recurrent neural network is because recurrent neural networks work really well with what we call sequential data. So sequential data is going to be things like music, stock prices, and text. Basically the idea is that sequential data is when the data point before a data point affects that data point. So what do I mean by this? If you think about in music, if you want to most accurately predict what note is going to come next, you're going to have to look at the previous notes that came before it. And it's the same thing in text. If you want to know what letter is going to come next in a word, you're going to have to look at the letters that came before it and see which letter would form an actual word. So that's the basic idea behind this and to put it very simply and obviously I'll have in the link in the description that's going to explain the math behind neural networks. Basically what the neural what the recurrent neural network is going to do is it's going to have a data point inputted in and then it's going to have the next data point inputted into the neural network with the weights of the previous data point. So this is going to allow the neural network to learn based on time sequence data, based on sequ sequential data. So that's just a basic overview. Again, if you want to learn more, there's a link in the description. But for now, we are going to get started actually building our neural network. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import our dependencies. So we're going to import Keras, import NumPy as NP, and finally we are going to import random. Now we're going to import the data set, and the data set that I have is from Amazon Web Services. It is a collection of the works of German philosopher Nietzsche, and so I'm going to uh, have run the recurrent neural network on this data set, and then the recurrent neural network is going to produce fake quotes from the German philosopher Nietzsche. So again, you can do this on whatever you want. If you want to do this on song lyrics, like generate new song lyrics in the style of an artist, I have a file that's on the GitHub, it's called lyricdownloader.py, and basically right here where it says artist name, you input the name of the artist that you want, and it's going to download all of their lyrics from azlyrics.com, which is a very popular site for finding lyrics. But anyways, enough with that, it's time for us to import the data set. So I'm going to import IO, and I'm going to say the path to this data set is equal to Keras dot utils dot data utils dot get underscore file and then in here the file is going to be Nietzsche dot text so that's spelled N I E T Z S C H E dot txt I know it's very difficult to spell and then the source of this file or the origin is going to be equal to https colon slash slash s3 dot amazon aws dot com slash text hyphen data sets slash n i e t z s c h e dot txt and then now that we have the path imported we are going to import the text data set just like if it were on our local machine, we're going to say with io.open path, and we're going to set the encoding equal to utf-8. So we'll just make it a little bit easier for us. As f, we're going to say the text is going to equal to f.read.lower. And the reason why we're doing lower is we want to set everything in the text to lowercase so then the neural network doesn't have to learn capitalization rules on top of grammar rules, spelling, and everything else that it needs in order to generate quotes in the style of the German philosopher Nietzsche. And then finally, let's just print the length of the text so that we can kind of see what type of data set we're looking at. So we see right here we have 600,000 characters, which is quite a lot. Again, you want to make sure that your data set is as large as possible. 
or else your uh, neural network is going to do two things. One, it's just going to output a bunch of garbage because it can't really learn the style. Or two, it's just going to copy verbatim from the data set and that's not good either because we want to generate original text. And again, that all depends on epics and all the other training hyperparameters, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. All right, so now that we have the data set imported, next what we need to do is right now the data set is imported, but everything is in characters. We need to take these characters and we need to turn them into numbers. So if you're already working with stock price data, then you don't have to do this because your data is already in numbers. But basically we have to convert every single character into a number so then the neural network is actually predicting what number comes next. Anyways, and we're going to do uh, one hot encoding sort of as well because obviously there's no mathematical relation between like A and B and A and C so we need to make sure that those are categorical variables. So bear with me, this is going to be kind of long and complicated but I promise it'll make sense later. So we're going to say chars are equal to sorted list set text and then we're just gonna print the chars print the length of the chars alright so you see we have 57 different characters which is pretty good next what we need to do is we need to assign those 57 characters to uh, numbers and then we need to go through the entire data set and convert that all into numbers. So I'm gonna say char underscore indices is equal to we're gonna create a dictionary. That dictionary is gonna have the dimensions of C comma I for I comma C in and we're going to say enumerate chars. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to say indices underscore char is equal to dict, and it's going to be i comma c for i comma in c for i comma c in enumerate. Let me spell that right. Enumerate chars. Alright, so we'll run that. Okay, it looks like everything ran smoothly with that. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to create lists and that's going to have all of our data in it. So we've sort of assigned each character to a number. Now what we need to do is go through the entire data set and convert everything. So first we're going to create an empty array called sentences. So we'll say sentences equals to empty square brackets. We're also going to create an empty array called next, next underscore chars. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop. So we're going to say for i in range 0, comma length of text minus 40, comma 3, minus... 40 comma 3 and basically what this is going to do is it's going to go through the corpus of our data set and it's going to chunk it up and then it's going to go through and it's going to enumerate everything. So this might not fully make sense and a lot of these numbers you can play around with just this makes sure that everything goes through, gets enumerated, gets turned into a number instead of a letter and it also doesn't overload the RAM or anything like that. So inside this for loop, we're going to say sentences dot append text open square brackets i colon i plus 40. So I'm using the number 40 because that's just going to represent a word, even though obviously most words are well below 40 characters. And we're going to say next underscore chars dot append and we're going to append text and we're going to say i plus 40. Alright, so now that that all looks good, we're going to create our x and y variables. So x is going to be set to a numpy zero array, so np dot zeros. And if we look here, it says the first thing we need is the shape. So I'm going to set the shape equal to the length 
of sentences, 40, and then the length of characters. And then we're going to say the data type or the D type is going to equal to np.bool for boolean because it's going to be a boolean type. And the y variable is going to be the same thing as the x variable, so np.zeros, except for in the shape we are, aren't going to have the number 40. So it's going to be np.zeros, the length of sentences, comma, the length of chars, and the data type will also be d type equal to np.bool. All right, so we got our x and y variables set up. Finally, we're going to run two last for loops, nested for loops, that is. So for i in, for i comma sentence in enumerate sentences, we're going to say for t comma char in enumerate sentence x square brackets i comma t and again the t and the i can be set to whatever you want to I just find that using one letter variables when we're talking about loops works a lot faster char underscore indices square brackets char and we're gonna set that equal to one and then outside of this for loop we're going to say y i comma char underscore indices square brackets next underscore chars square brackets i is also equal to one. So let's run that and it's going through the corpus of the text and now it looks like everything is converted from a b c d to one two three four which is a good sign. So you can see all of this code right here was just working with the data set. Now it's time to actually create our neural network. So by now you should already know the deal. We're going to say model is equal to keras.models.sequential. Next what we're going to do is we're going to add our first layer. So we're going to say model.add keras.layers dot LSTM and basically what LSTM stands for is long short-term memory and this is a slight modification of the RNN model right here that we see in this picture where it's going to make sure that the neural network remembers certain things but also forgets other things that's what the long short-term memory stands for because our text is so long you gotta, gotta make sure that the model remembers certain things about the text but then forgets other more minor features. So the math behind this is kind of complex. I'll post links in the description down below for you to read if you want more. But for now, we are just going to create the model and not go in too much about how it works, just sort of give you the basics. So that's going to have 128 neurons. And we're going to set the input underscore shape equal to 40, which is the number that we've been using throughout this whole this whole file, 40, and the length of chars. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to add another layer, model.add. And this is going to be a dense layer, so we're going to say keras.layers.dense. And we're going to set the number of neurons equal to the length of chars. And just a good rule of thumb, when you're adjusting hyperparameters and you don't really know how many neurons you want in a specific layer, a good rule of thumb is just to go for the amount of attributes that you have. So in this case, the length of characters, in the housing prices example, the number of attributes that we had, stuff like that. And we're going to set the activation, the activation function, let's go with a softmax, which, um, is an interesting name to say the least. Next what we're going to do is we're going to compile the model. So we're going to say model dot compile. The loss function is going to equal to K 
categorical underscore cross entropy and the optimizer is going to be equal to keras dot optimizers dot rms prop and we're going to set the learning rate to something small let's go with 0 0.01 I don't know why rms prop works really well in this model but I heard it does so we're just going to go with that and of course we want the learning rate to be small because we have a relatively large data set and we're going to be going through a lot of epics so we don't want the model to make too many assumptions too quickly all right so let's run that okay it looks like our models all nice and compiled so that's good next what we're going to do is we are going to create a function that's going to give us some sample text so we're gonna say def sample and the parameters are gonna take in is preds for prediction and the temperature is going to equal to 1.0 and basically what temperature is, is temperature is how much randomness is going to be in the model. So I use 1.0 because I feel like that's not so much randomness where it's going to input just completely garbage text, just gibberish, and not too much where it's just going to be straight up copying from the training set. So we'll do that, and we'll say preds is going to be equal to array preds dot as type and we want float 64 okay that looks good next we're gonna say preds is equal to the NP dot log of preds divided by temperature so this is sort of how temperature works it's gonna simplify the model a bit more so you see when the temperature is 0.1 NP, the preds is going to equal to np.log preds over temperature, which is 1, which means that it's just equal to np.log of preds. And then we're going to say that exponent of preds is equal to np.exp preds. And we're going to set preds equal to, once again, to the exp underscore preds divided by np dot sum exp underscore preds finally we're gonna set probos equal to np dot random dot multinomial one comma preds comma one for our dimensions and then we're going to say return np dot argmax probos so that's everything that we need for our neural network to start displaying the results of its findings next what we're going to do is we're going to train the model so first thing we're going to say is we're going to say model dot fit and we're going to fit the x to the y we're going to make the batch underscore size equal to 18 and the epics I'm going to set to equal 1 but what you're going to want to do is have a much higher epic count it's just because this model takes a really long time to train so for time purposes I'm just going to set it to one epic next what we're going to do is we're going to declare a variable called start underscore index and that's going to equal to random dot rand int zero comma the length of the text minus forty minus one alright now that we have the start index we're gonna say for diversity in and then we're gonna open up an array in here and we're gonna say zero point two zero point five one point oh one point two so for that list, diversity in that list, we're going to say generated. And this is going to be where we're going to store our generated text. Generated equals an empty string. And the sentence is going to equal to text start underscore index start underscore index plus 40. 
So basically the start index variable right up here, what it's doing is it's going through the text and selecting a random part. So the sentence is going to equal one 40 character chunk randomly in the text and then the model is going to try to predict what comes next after that and that's going to be our generated text which we're going to store in the empty string variable called generated. And then we're going to say generated plus equals sentence. Alright, now we're going to say for i in range 400 and this is going to depend on how long, how large you want your output text to be. Actually I'll make it 600, so we'll have like about a 600 character long sample passage that the model generated. We'll say x underscore pred equals, and we'll do a numpy array with zero, so np dot zeros one forty and the length of cars. Chars. Next we're gonna say for T comma char in enumerate sentence x underscore pred open square brackets zero comma t comma char underscore indices char and we're gonna set that equal to one. So this should look familiar to what we did up here in this part of the code and that's because we're essentially doing the same thing with outputting and training the model as we did with um, converting it all to numbers. So that equals one. Next, outside of the first for loop, we're gonna say preds is equal to model dot predict, and we're gonna do the x underscore pred and the y. Sorry, not the y. We're gonna predict the x underscore pred with a verbose equal to zero. And verbose, this is just basically just a variable of how much the model is going to repeat itself, stuff like that. And we're going to say zero in the square brackets here. Now we're going to create a variable called next underscore index. And that's going to equal to sample. We're going to say preds and diversity. And then we're going to say next underscore char is going to be equal to indices underscore char next underscore index. And then the generated variable is going to plus equal the next underscore char that the model predicts. And the sentence is going to equal to sentence one colon plus the next underscore char and then finally we're going to take this generated and we're going to write it to a file so we're gonna say outside of this for loop here with open and we'll name the file that we're gonna store our example text in as example dot txt comma w for write because we're writing to the file as f f dot write generated so basically all this is doing right here is this is making sure that the generated string that we have of um, example text in the style of Friedrich Nietzsche is being written to a file called example dot text which we will be able to see right here all right, so everything looks good. Now let's run our model. Okay, so it looks like our model is done training. We can see I only went through one epic. Let's see how much it learned in one epic. So I'm going to refresh, and we see right here we have example.txt. I'm going to open it up, and you can see already some of these look like actual words. So we have colors, with, the, and obviously this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but in just one epic, in just about seven minutes on Colab, the model went from knowing absolutely nothing at all to sort of learning how to spell a little bit. 
So that's really cool, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Sweet. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what we did in this video, please leave them down below. Now, if I could have just one more minute of your time, I would like to tell you about a service that I've been using for over a year now called Script. Now, just as a side note, Script did not sponsor me to make this video. I just wanted to tell you about it. Put simply, Script is a lot like Audible, except for instead of being $15 a month, it's only nine, and instead of only having two audiobooks per month, you get an unlimited access to a plethora of audiobooks, ebooks, documents, and even sheet music and magazines. So for me, this was obviously a no brainer. And right now, if you use the link in the description, you get 60 days free of Scribd, and I get one month if you sign up using my link. So that's why Scribd didn't officially sponsor this video. I'm just telling you about it so that I can get some free months and I can continue learning and you can also continue learning with your 60 day free trial. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.